Let me show you how shameless the Republicans are. Ryan I's push for entitlement reform in 2018. They just finished saying they weren't going to do this. They just finished saying that. We covered the story of Bernie calling out the Senate Republicans, you know, and Marco Rubio, for example, was like, no, no, listen, we're not going to do that. And the reason why we're not going to do that, I mean, listen, I have a mom. And my mom wouldn't let me f come back home to Florida and go in the house if I go after the Social Security and the Medicare. So, no! Another Republican was like, Bernie, there's no secret plan here. We don't have Medicare and Social Security mentioned in this budget bill. So, I don't know why you're fear-mongering. I mean, if we wanted to do it, we could do it now. We're going through budget reconciliation, which means you only need 51 votes to pass our tax plan. So, if we wanted to cut Medicare and Social Security, why wouldn't we just do it now? This, these are the arguments that they made. But Bernie's response was, listen, you're not that dumb. You're terrible for the American people, but you're clever with it. You're sly with it in how you're fucking people over. So Bernie's argument was, you know what you're going to do? You're going to pass this uh, tax cut bill, which adds any, anywhere from $1 trillion to $1.4 trillion to the deficit. So you're liars, by the way, about how, oh, we, oh, deficit hawks, we care so much, but we gotta spend within our means, we gotta live within our means, and we get fucking dumping all this debt on our grandchildren. <laughs> the debt, oh, the debt, oh, the debt is so horrible. And then when they think nobody's looking, anyway, pass that bill that adds a trillion to 1.4 trillion to the debt. What happened? I thought you were fiscal uh, conservatives, fiscal hawks, and you have discipline. No, you, you wanted to add even more to it. But then, Bernie laid out, as soon as they pass that, they're going to turn around in a little bit and go, Oh! The fucking deficit! Could you guys believe this? Look at this! Anyway, we need to get this house in order, so we have to- we don't have a choice! We have to cut Social Security and Medicare! And they won't phrase it like that. What they'll do is they'll say, We have to reform it! That's a reform! We're not cutting it, we're reforming it, we're saving it! That's another one that you save, we're saving it! So, what they- what they want to do, some of their ideas are, Hey, raise the retirement age, but raise it for people who are 55 and under now. So in other words, people, some people are grandfathered in to the way Social Security works. But then we fuck over everybody who's below a certain age. That's their trick. Fuck, yeah, just fuck over everybody who's below a certain age. Or they're going to try to, like, semi-privatize it. Remember, Bush tried in, I think it was 2004, to uh, privatize social, social Security and Medicare. So, they want to try something similar to that. Um, there'll be a, a heavy onus on, or, you know, they'll focus on private accounts to one extent or another, because what they want to do is take that money and turn it over to their friends on Wall Street who give them campaign contributions. And they want to invest it in the marketplace. Well, that's just so that their Wall Street cronies can get a cut of your money. And also, let's face it, how volatile of an idea is that? Can you imagine putting this money that's supposed to be guaranteed into a casino capitalist marketplace where there's peaks and valleys and it goes up and down and what? It's not like we haven't- we had a fucking Great Depression. We had a Great Recession. We're in a bubble right now and you want to take everybody's, uh, you know, retirement money and just fuck it, gamble with it. No, we don't want that. But they're gonna do that and they're gonna hide behind the idea no, we're saving the program, because it's unsustainable right now, but that's nonsense! That's- they say it's unsustainable, but then you crunch the numbers on it, it turns out, it's totally solvent until like 2038. And then, even after 2038, it pays out like 85% of its benefits. You know, all you would need to do to fix Social Security forever? Is just raise the- the cap on, uh, the money that's taxable. So right now, you're only taxed for Social Security on your first, I think it's $115,000. So that means that, it, let's say there's, um, let's say there's a dentist that makes $115,000. He pays the exact same amount in Social Security tax as Mitt Romney, who makes $15 million a year. The same amount, exact same amount of tax. 
because it's only your first like $115,000 that you're taxed on for Social Security. If you just get rid of that cap, well, then Mitt Romney would pay way more in Social Security tax. It would be the same percentage, but it would be way more money because he has $15 million, not $115,000. So then that's it. Social Security is taken care of. But they're not considering that at all. That's an idea Bernie's pushed before. That's an idea that other actual progressives have pushed before. They're not considering that at all. That's not at all. They're saying, no, let's raise the retirement age and let's like semi-privatize this thing. Oh, God. So, but Paul Ryan is even more upfront about it. He had a moment of honesty on a radio show this week. Here's what he said, quote, We're going to have to get back next year. We're going to have to, we're going to have to get back next year at entitlement reform which is how you tackle the debt and the deficit. Healthcare entitlements, such as Medicare and Medicaid, are the biggest drivers of the debt. So we spend more time on healthcare entitlements because that's really where the problem lies, fiscally speaking. I find it amazing that people actually talk about, the mainstream media talks about Paul Ryan like he's some sort of intellectual. He's not some sort of intellectual. He has the same answer to everything. Uh oh, cut the programs that help regular people because, you know, that's where the problem lies, fiscally speaking. And the media's like, oh, oh, he said fiscally speaking. Oh, he's so smart. What an intellectual. He's the guy who never got out of his Ayn Rand phase. That's what he is. In, in like, high school or college years, uh, many white boys go through an Ayn Rand phase where they come up with this uh, worldview, this vision, this philosophy. I've, I, actually, selfishness is a good thing. Greed is a good thing. Uh, but most people, you know, uh, get out of that phase. Not Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan's still in that phase. The biggest problem is healthcare spending. What are we going to do? Entitlements. By the way, you know why they're called entitlements? Because you're entitled to it. Because you paid into the program, and then you're going to get out of the program. Which is why entitlement's not even a good word, because it has the feeling of it's like something you didn't earn. No, you did earn it. It's called entitlement because you are entitled to it. But that's why the real terminology should be earned benefit. Because it doesn't even have the feeling of, oh, you're getting something you didn't earn. It's an earned benefit program. You paid into it your whole life, you're going to get out of it. But what they're trying to do is say, no, you paid into it, but you're not going to get out of it. You're going to get out of it a lot less than what you're supposed to get out of it. And then just the notion that it's the big drivers of the debt, man. I mean, come on, it's the big drivers of the debt. What are we going to do? They never would ever say that about areas where we actually waste money. The United States spends more on military spending than the next nine biggest spending countries combined. And most of those countries are our allies. The amount of money we spend on the military, we have the largest military ever created in human history. And Paul Ryan, he doesn't say, hey, we need to cut that. In fact, he's in favor of raising that. He wants to spend even more on our empire. But when it comes to fucking health care for grandmas and grandpas, and when it comes to money so that you can survive when you're in your old age, we got to cut. That's the biggest drivers of the debt. Why haven't you said, hey, maybe we spend $100 billion a year to maintain 900 military bases? Paul Ryan, why wouldn't you say, at the very least, you know, I think we could get by with 450 military bases. We don't need 900. I think we could say $50 billion up front, just like that. Why haven't you said that? Why haven't you said, you know, ExxonMobil, they get a $4 billion corporate welfare check every year. It's a giant subsidy from the taxpayers to ExxonMobil. And we say, oh, we're giving it to them for research and development. They need to do research and develop. Why do they need money for research and development? They're one of the most profitable corporations in the world. Why are you not saying, hey, we need to get rid of the corporate welfare for ExxonMobil? We give $80 billion a year to the big banks. Why are you not saying, oh, what, what are we doing here? Why are we giving money to the big banks? I thought you were a pure capitalist. It turns out you're in favor of socialism, but only when it's for the rich and when it's for the corporations. So what you really are is a corporatist. That's what you are. Why are you not trying to cut that? I mean, the amount of money, the, the Iraq war, $7 trillion it's going to cost when all is said and done. $7 trillion. Again, he has nothing to say, nothing to say about the fact that we're still in Iraq. 
We're still in Afghanistan. We're in Syria. Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, Libya. Uh, and now there's one more. What's the other one? Niger. So there's eight countries that we're in. He's not saying, oh, the, come on, the military spending. I mean, it might be the biggest driver of the debt. Nope, would never say it. Because the money, by the way, there's discretionary and non-discretionary spending. So in other words, they have, there's, those are two separate categories for a reason. So Medicare and Social Security is viewed as, well, that's kind of over here in its own thing. Now, why would they do that? Well, they do that because, again, earned benefit programs. You paid into it, you're getting out of it. So, that's money that's coming right back to you. Now, what they want to do is, they want to take that money and slash left and right, not give you back your own money, but the money that doesn't come back to you, they want to keep paying that out. When you do massive Wall Street bailouts, that money's going into, into literally for bonuses to some CEO's bank account, even though he bankrupted the fucking company. But they're bailing him out. Now, are you going to see that money? You're not going to see that money. You do see the money for Social Security and Medicare. You don't see it in that situation. Do you see the money when it fucking blows up over some innocent family's house in Syria when we uh, attack? You don't see that money. Guess what? When you spend money on bombs, it goes kaplooey and blows up. And then you don't get that money back. He wants to keep that money. That's fine. Spend that blank check for that. But Social, so Social Security Medicare? That we got to cut. They, they just pushed a tax bill that adds up to $1.4 to the deficit. And they're doing that by getting rid of the estate tax, which applies to the richest 0.2% of people by getting rid of dividends taxes. So they're slashing taxes for rich people and corporations. They're raising taxes on the middle class and the poor. According to the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, everybody who makes $75,000 a year or less, you're going to get your taxes raised over the next decade. So they're adding to the deficit, raising taxes on regular people, and they want to turn around and cut your Social Security and Medicare. It's unreal. These guys are fucking pirates, man. They're pirates. They're waging a class war. They Can you imagine being so disgusting and brazen that you just supported a bill that adds $1.4 trillion to the deficit, and now you turn around and go, the fucking deficit? Why is the deficit so high? I guess we have to cut programs for regular people. You just pushed a tax bill Cuts taxes for the rich massively. Here's an idea. You want to address the deficit and the debt. Stop cutting taxes for the rich. Stop, 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 stop. If you just don't do that, the deficit and the debt would be much better off. But no, they say, well, that's a given. We have to cut taxes for the rich and corporations. Obviously. Fucking obviously. But oh, what are we going to do? We got to cut health care, social security and Medicare. We got to cut that. Brazen. Listen. If you're somebody who votes Republican or voter Republican. There's one thing I want you to know that's not debatable. This is, it's not a question. It's not like, well, what's your opinion on said matter? They're not looking out for you if you're a regular person. If you're middle class, if you're poor, if you're upper middle class, fucking 95% of the American people, maybe 99% of the American people, they don't care about you. They don't care about you in any way. That's what I want you to know. That's what I want you to know. So there are some people out there who think, for whatever reason, they were raised in a family that's Republican, or they don't follow the news closely, or whatever. But there are some people out there who think, no, the Republicans really are the party of the little guy. They're the party of the average Joe. And they think that for a variety of reasons and propaganda that's been pervasive for a long time. Like, for example, many of these people think, oh, the Republicans want to cut my taxes. They want to cut my taxes. So the Republicans want me to keep more of my money. The Democrats want to take more of my money. Therefore, the Republicans are, are the party that's looking out for me. There are people who believe this, guys. I just want to let you know that. 
Well, I want those people to know. I'm speaking directly to those people. You've been had. You've been took. You've been played for a chump. The good news is you don't have to keep falling for it. Because now you know the information. Now you know that according to the Congressional Budget Office, uh, when you look at the tax bill, it raises taxes on people making $75,000 a year or less. By the way, so there's all the tax cuts for the middle class, there's a sunset provision on it, and it runs out. You know where there's not a sunset provision? Taxes for corporations and the rich. Those are permanent. Yours, hey, we'll give you a little boost up front, but then we raise your taxes. You see what they're doing? So, I just want you to know, they don't care about you, they despise you, they're not looking out for you, but now you know that. So don't, don't get fooled by their nonsense. And let's be clear, this isn't me saying the Democrats are good. They're not. They're not good. To a large extent, they're corporate sellouts as well. But just know the Republicans are even worse. They're even worse. They're more grotesque. And they want to go further in screwing you over and doing the bidding of their rich donors. So don't get fooled. Don't, don't get fooled by it. Now there's no excuse. I've given you all the information. This is what they want to do. Every program that you rely on, you know, you need your money. Let's face it. You need your money if you're in the middle class. You got bills to pay. Well, just know the Republicans want to cut every program that helps you and also raise your taxes. So just keep that in mind the next time you go vote.